Happy St. Patrick's Day! It is Block Wednesday. I'm Pat Sloan and we have got our block. I've got some applique tips and I'm going to talk about how to do a special little project which uh, is part of the home is. Yes! So because it's St. Patrick's Day, at the end I will show you my shamrock quilt hanging up in my dining room because my home is blocks are all blue. <laughs> So I, I don't have a green block for that one. I have blue. And what is our theme? Might it be the garden? The garden of your home or the outdoor space of your home brings lots of memories just like the interior and the people that are in your home. So we're going to celebrate this week our gardens. Uh, I just love tulips this time of year when the daffodils, the tulips, all these early bulbs come up. It is so exciting to, um, to see them really. And the butterflies, the butterflies. Uh, but first let me tell you a little bit about what gardens mean to me. You know, probably if I think about it like way back when I was a kid, I probably uh, should have pursued something in gardening because really I had been gardening since I was an uh, early teenager, probably about 13 years old. I started buying plants. I put in tomatoes in our yard. I mean, my parents don't garden at all. Um, so this was, you know, this was my gig. I did the whole thing. And then every home that we had, I would plant mostly flowers. I'm mostly into flowers, although I have done vegetables here and there. Uh, and But your home also has other things outside in the yard. You might have a tree that you, you know, had a swing in as a kid, or you planted trees in memories of somebody, uh, or when uh, my neighbors planted a tree in the front yard when their first daughter was born. Uh, so those kind of things are out there. You might have a great yard space where you have picnics and play horseshoes or, you know, kick ball in the backyard. All of these things are what I want you to remember and share today when you make your block, when you make your home is block. Uh, I put I put all the ones that I have up here. Whoop, chairs in the way. There we go. So I've got them. We're working on this middle section. There's, there's some blocks still to do before we can sew that middle section up. I did do the extras. Uh, I did do all of these now and they're the same. Uh, for me, for the flying geese, this unit up here, I've only done the one. I have two others of those to do. And as always at the back, this is an older one. This is from block nine. But at the back of your pattern, I'm giving you this sheet. I'm telling you where to put everything. The directions are in another pattern by itself. Uh, so if you're not started to assemble it, you, know, you can go to the project page and get the directions. So. Um, they're, they're there for you. I want to show you uh, how I go about laying out these applique pieces onto the background. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> for, for those of you who are totally allergic and can give me a doctor note, you're allergic to applique, but you, you can prove it with a doctor's note, <laughs> I have linked you to a block, a 10 inch finished block from a prior sew along that you can do instead of this one. But seriously, you should just do this one. Um, because I also, for the bonus pattern, look at that, I put together a little mini quilt. It ends up being 16 by 16. You can make it into a pillow. You could just make a little wall hanging. Uh, you could put another border around it, make it a little bit bigger, put it on your table. So I have selected fabric for this one so that I can show you how I do placement, how I think about putting these down. So let's just, <clears throat> I'm going to move this box over here. I'm going to come down here because what I did is I really love that Easter egg hunt fabric that I showed you. This one, the Easter egg hunt, and I am going to do the World Quilt Day on Saturday, this coming Saturday. The pattern for that I'm going to do with the Easter egg hunt, but I snagged out a few of the squares to do this, this quilt. And I want to show you how easy it is to do placement and, and the sort of the process I use to do placement. So let me put the picture here so you can see them both. So I made, now this is a 10 inch square, not 10 and a half because I just took it from the layer cake. So I will have to adjust my pattern a wee bit 
to make it work. But I wanted to use this fabric with the eggs and the flowers around it. Oh my God, I love this fabric. Uh, it's so cute. Now when, when I'm doing placement, I have, first of all, I will go and pull, pull off all this paper before I lay it down. And I would generally lay this down on the ironing board, have my iron there so when I'm ready, I can work. Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna leave the paper on for right now. So I will put, there's two, uh, two of the tulips that are up higher and one that is a little lower. So you can see that, right? So one's a little lower. My big deal is you do not want to get too far on either side to get sucked into the seam allowance. You don't want part of your tulip in the seam allowance. And then you're going to have some space down here. I will then take the butterfly and the butterfly, when you're looking at this, the curved parts of the butterfly are at the bottom. So my butterfly has curves at the bottom and then I did a little yellow body. So the butterfly, they kind of go right next to each other. The shape, you can make it separate just a little bit. <clears throat> and then I put, I did a little yellow for the body. There we go. So I see now right now I've got him too close to the top. You know, he's way too close to the top. So it means I need to move him over a little bit there. So he's pretty far up there. I'm, I'm not trying to bring him down too far. For the, the next thing now, so I have all these. I'm not fusing anything yet. I'm just laying it all out. I'm making the picture. I'm making the picture. Think of it that way. Once they're positioned here, next will be the stems. Because you want to put, let me bring you up here to talk a second. When you're laying these things out for applique, <clears throat> you want to put your largest pieces first, not the skinny little things. If you put the stems there first, the stems are like, putting on your earrings and then deciding what outfit will go with them. Now, maybe you have a special pair of earrings that are like that. For, for the most part, you put on your clothing and then you put on the smaller pieces. You put on the main thing that you're wearing first, then the smaller pieces. In applique, you want to put out the main shapes. Those take up the most space and then you can move them, adjust them and put in the smaller pieces with it. So that's why the tulip, uh, tulips themselves, the flowers th themselves, and the butterfly get put down first. Now with the stems, they're all longer than you need. So you can do two things. You can either push them up way underneath like this, you know, or if you want, you, it doesn't really matter. You can make them a little longer and then cut off, cut off the bottom. You definitely want to cut off the bottom for the middle one because he's, he's long. And so you will just chop that off when you get it how you want it. I didn't have any green. I didn't want to use the green from the fabric from the Easter hunt. So Easter egg hunt. So I went into my stash and found this green that works really well. Now we're going to put the carrots. So first, let me show you this on the carrots. Oh my gosh, they're so darling. The carrots have little faces. Can you see them? See the little eyes? Oh my gosh, so cute. So I had to get each one. I had to have them a little faces. So the leaves I'm doing sitting on top of the stem. You could put them under the stem, but the whole goal for me is to actually get all of that right down in the seam allowance. So they're all right down at the bottom there at, at the base of the block so that they will be in the seam allowance when I sew this together. Now here, now when I was doing these carrots, because of the little faces, I made sure all the little faces were going up right side up, the top of the carrots right side up so that they weren't upside down. I did not want a carrot upside down on my leaf. I wanted them right side up. And the leaves are, you know, they're interchangeable, but one end's a little pointier than the other. So I put that at the bottom. And then for the uh, little, the short leaves, there's the short leaves. So I've got one with a, one with a carrot on it. Now, this is how I will do it. Now, I will have taken all the paper off before I place this down. Then once it's placed, I will go and heat it with the iron and fuse it. And then I will stitch it with my um, Orafil 50 weight thread. Now, up close and personal, this butterfly stands out. It is blending a bit into that background. You know, so I could decide to come over here and choose a different pink, like there's a pink that has just the carrots, which might blend better, or I might just leave it because I kind of like it and it doesn't bother me. Or I could do a gold 
like the gold that this came from, I could do the whole butterfly gold. So I might change that now that it's here. You know, I might change and do a gold butterfly and then do a pink uh, in the middle. <clears throat> so that's an option. We'll see. We'll see if I feel like it. Uh, I'm not sure what I will do around here. I probably pull in this again, uh, maybe in the half square triangles. Uh, I have like two pieces of it in this fabric line or have actually had the bunny faces in the same color. So that would be good to keep the peach, peach and gold and a bit of green. So there is how I lay out the, how I lay out the shapes. You put the largest ones and then you go down to the smaller ones. And for this project, your stems are tucked under. I mean, your stems are tucked under at the top and then they can be chopped off because this one's definitely longer. They're all the same stem pattern. You just chop off what you don't need for the longer one. So excited for you to see that. Now, our block, block of the day. <laughs> Hope March block a day. Here's my hope block. There we go. I've got that big floral in there this time. So they're coming along really well. Okay, let's look at my my St. Patrick's Day living room, dining room. You know, I put all the green up, so I wanted to share that with you so you could see it. So I had the have the shamrock up on the wall. I did the table runner on the table and I have a stand in the middle that has uh, you know, all kinds of small things in it, including the little tiny shamrock coaster. And then in my living room, I changed out and put the flower bouquet on the wall. Um, I have one of my zigzag table runners on the table. Uh, let's see, I've got um, the, the green checkerboard on the back of my sofa and then pillows. So that is how I switched out all of my things to have sort of a, a decorating that can go spring through Easter into the, um, till I change them out again for like Americana for 4th of July, like a red, white, and blue, I'll change it out and probably later in June. So I get a few months of looking at this pretty green and soft colors, um, which I really like. I'm really, it's really nice to switch it out. Uh, fun to get the quilts out, fun to look at them. Okay, so I did not get my, I did not get my, my cross stitch done. He's coming along. Here's the shamrock. Here's the hat. Uh, I, I definitely have to work a little bit more on these to make the dates. <laughs> I tell you, it's cross stitch is not the main thing that I do. So I do a little bit here, a little bit there, as you can tell. Um, what I'm excited about, though, is, is, to, is to use this variegated, um, the hand dyed thread uh, for the shamrock. I think that's going to be so pretty. But I'm also debating, I may change out the color of the words. Here's the words here. Uh, and I like that variegation, but it's really light. And I'm feeling like I would like to maybe just have it like a charcoal color or a navy. I'm going to have to see. I'm going to have to look. Um, but I, didn't do, I do, didn't do any more letters on purpose because I only have a little bit there to take out if I decide to change it. And I think I'm probably going to change it. All right. And well, since we were looking at Easter fabric, Deb sent me this adorable little card. Look how cute that is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so sweet. All right, my friend, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I am legitimately got uh, Irish in me, so uh, I will have a great day and I hope you do too. Check down below where in the description box you can go over to get the download, click the subscribe and the like for me, click that button, please. Um, thank you so much for using all of our links. I love you, Mwah. see you online.